So in no particular order, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about respiratory infections. Now, how do people with respiratory infections typically present? Uh, the big thing to always pay attention to are the vital signs, and specifically any kind of infectious process, you want to pay attention to their temperature. Certainly for a respiratory process, you want to pay attention to their respiratory rate, and very often the heart rate also is a sign of the body under stress. So elevated heart rate is also going to be indicating that something is going on over here. Now as soon as you start thinking about a respiratory infection, you should always be thinking that step one is going to ask you either what the diagnosis or what the treatment is. Now for the treatment for respiratory infection is almost always going to require antibiotics if it's a bacterial infection. So let's proceed and talk a little bit about that. I've included a slide that shows two chest x-rays, one for typical and one for atypical pneumonia. Now, let's talk a little bit about what, what it is that we're talking about. For a typical pneumonia, the picture is somebody who's old and very, very sick. So this person is like 68 years old, and they've had this horrendous, horrendous fever and cough, and they've just been completely debilitated, and they've been you know, just in bed for the last couple of days until they came to see you. You get this chest x-ray and you see this characteristic lobar infiltrate over here, it's in the right lower lobe, and you can actually make out the fissure line, which is kind of nice because you can appreciate the anatomy of the lungs over there in this chest x-ray. This is the picture of a typical pneumonia. And the bugs that we like to think about typically are strep pneumo, haemophilus influenza, and staph aureus. These are the big bugs that cause typical pneumonia. On the other hand, when we think about an atypical pneumonia, we get a slightly different picture. The person is usually younger, they're generally healthy, and they're not as sick. So for example, you see a 24-year-old man, he comes into you for a persistent cough and low-grade fever, but he still has been able to go to work, although he's been feeling pretty lousy, and he says, Doc, you got to do something for me. Maybe I need a Z-Pack. People like the word Z-Pack because, you know, they've had it before, and then it makes them feel better. So you get a chest x-ray, and then you see the chest image that we have over here on the right side of the screen, which has a patchy kind of infiltrate, and it's a little hard to see, but in the left lung field up at around the cardiac silhouette, there is a circle around a, a hazy area. And it's not a very impressive chest x-ray compared to the one with typical pneumonia, which really, really jumps out at you, that low bar infiltrate. But this is very typical for atypical pneumonia. I know it's weird to say typical and atypical over and over and over again, but in spite of the wordplay, we do have to know what kind of bugs that we're going to be worried about. So the bugs that cause atypical pneumonia very often on the step one are going to be mycoplasma pneumonia, chlamydia pneumonia, and legionella pneumophila. As you recall from the last lecture, there are a couple of key features that we had to remember. Mycoplasma does not have a cell wall, and it also contains sterols in its membrane. Chlamydia also is an endocellular. It's parasitic in that it lives in our cells, and Legionella has got bizarre culture requirements. So very important things to know about pneumonia infections. Also, immunocompromised people tend to also get infected with Pseudomonas, and it's important to remember that people who are immunocompromised are usually HIV positive, or they have in the history some kind of recent organ transplantation, be it liver, heart, or kidney, because then they're going to be on immunosuppressants. So again, for the step one, always remember how to recognize somebody who's immunocompromised, because that's going to change what you're looking at in terms of the question.